Hi hey, everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery, and I'm preparing to check in on a couple of my worm bins. I think they're due for a feeding. It's been 10 days since we last checked in on them. What they got last time was a whole bunch of cantaloupe. Not only the cantaloupe rinds, but a whole bunch of the actual melon itself. Just, to, you know, didn't taste quite right. And turned into worm food. This is one of the bins, the older one, the 206 day old system. I was kind of expecting to see a real deep dent in the middle of the bin where we fed. The other system that we're feeding today is the slightly younger one, 146 day old bin. They were paired up despite the 60 days difference in their ages. There too, I don't really see what I was expecting to see, which was a big deep void where we had put in the yummy food I was almost certain we would see um, a big vacuum formed by the worms eating what they were given but I don't know we'll have to see what's going on in there so I'm gonna put on a glove get those up on the bench and we're gonna see what's happening so let's get to work where I live this morning early this morning was the first point in time when the temperatures actually fell a degree or two below freezing and for that reason, I've been out in my garden for the past few days collecting all the cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers that I could before that cold temperature arrives. So I bought in a number of tomatoes that sort of didn't really pass the quality control requirements. <laughs> so they were kept separate and were collected up to be turned into worm food. And then some of what's in here was even some of the cuttings from some of the tomatoes that were borderline where there was some retrievable yumminess in those tomatoes still. Um, <laughs> so, we, uh, so we've got a little bit of this and that, a little bit of like whole tomato in some cases, directly off the plant if it just didn't look too good or maybe it already fell on the floor, something like that and some stuff that's already been chopped up into little itsy bitsy convenient bite-sized pieces for the wormies that stuff's going to start getting really juicy as it thaws out i assume <laughs> all these worms hanging out this is always what i picture when i put down a piece of paper on the top surface with some nice moisture that's going to collect on it due to the recirculating nature of the uh plastic coverings, almost like a terrarium effect. So there's a whole bunch of worms that came out here just to hang out and enjoy that recirculating moisture. And I guess they don't really appreciate being out here in the bright light. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen if I just hold still here for a minute or two. how long that was 10 minutes 12 minutes at least 10 minutes perhaps 12 13 minutes of me holding that thing in front of the camera <laughs> I guess in a way I thought that that would be a possible way just to evict all the worms from the paper just let them leave on their own but you know when they're all kind of stranded out there with nowhere to dive down into out on a sheet of paper like that they are kind of stranded and then they begin with plan B. If they can't burrow, then they huddle. <laughs> so I guess the reason I wanted to see if I could remove some of the uh, worms off this stuff was because I wanted to get it out of our way so we can dig in and see how those cantaloupe rinds did. Kind of weird to me that the level in the middle where we fed isn't much lower so let's excavate and see what's going on it would be kind of weird to find a whole bunch of leftover cantaloupe rind but no such thing as I believe we probably anticipated some of the stuff I'm pulling out though is uh, corn cob chunks which we can probably give them a little bit of a squeeze to see if we can break them up a bit so we put 
put a few of them off to the side. Let's see what else is down the middle here. No signs of anything cantaloupe-ish. <laughs> Usually the one thing you do find though is the skin or the rind, you know, the outer peel on the outside of the fruit, of which I don't even see any here. So they did a little bit better than I expected they would. It was just weird to not see signs of a feeding frenzy down the middle of the bin. Usually there's a big divot down in the middle of the bin where the worms just got done eating. So I, I did find a couple pieces of paper here that I thought would be best off being placed right down low and then some of this corn cob if there's a op opportunity to help it along by busting it open nowadays I've been t trying to take that opportunity when it presents itself sometimes it's still too tough to do that like that one right there so what else was there anything else that seemed like it belonged down there no other large chunks of stuff perhaps here and there just a little piece of paper but they did a pretty good job on whatever it else whatever else it is that they got last time I think for some reason all the letter C's were popping up in my mind so in addition to the cantaloupe there was also I believe the coffee and the worm chow so the C is just the chow <laughs> see now here this is what I was kind of expecting to find was a hunk of leftover cantaloupe melon in this case a pretty good piece that still has the outer skin on it but also a good bit of the actual fleshy fruit on the skin so weird that it's not visible over in bin number two or over in the younger system here in the older system maybe we've just got a um, kind of a slower population I don't know maybe there's just other good stuff in the bin that they're satisfied with and don't feel the need to come over and partake in this delicious delicious melon wow, there is something going on here there's just worms everywhere <laughs> all right you know even though I just got done holding a big pile of worms for very long period of time let's just do one more little one here just for the fun of it Given enough time, I'm sure each of these little wormies would find themselves a nice dark place to hang out. But I'm not going to sit here all day holding them in front of the camera for you. i got some feeding that I'd like to take care of, and then we can call it a day. <laughs> Just wondering if we're going to have any other encounters like that down here. Oh, that was kind of fun, i got to say. A little bit anticlimactic over there in the younger bin. But... Digging into their feeding area. That was kind of fun. So let's do the same as we did before, is return some of this old stuff and the corn that I've got in my hand here. I'm just busting it up a little further as the opportunity to do so presents itself. And that's something else. <laughs> it had a circular shape to it, made me think that it was a... Uh, made me think that it was a piece of corn cob, but it's certainly not corn cob. I have to take a closer look at that at some point in the future, <laughs> because it's certainly not easy to break, whatever it is. Or maybe next time it will be. All right, interesting to find such a nice large chunk of leftovers for them. Now since the, um, since the stuff that we're giving them is full of juiciness, it's frozen now, but I think that once that frozen tomato all starts to thaw out, it's going to it's going to kick out a lot of moisture. So I've got my prepared bedding here. It's a it's a mix of cardboard and paper and leaves. 
But I almost thought like we could put sort of an absorbent layer beneath that, underneath all that juicy tomato to catch it and prevent it from all just draining to the bottom. And I'm sure that some of the paper shreds, cardboard shreds that we're going to pile in on top of here is also going to help with the absorption of some of that juiciness. I had thought about doing what I like to do sometimes, which is to just grab some of the leaves we found out on the surface and use those as a foundation for the feeding. Little little bedding boost of stuff that's already been in the bin for some time. But, I don't know. I figured we'd try to reuse some of it. I do have more. So we can apply a little bit fresh down into the feeding, I mean, out across the top surface. But, um... But you know what? Let's get their food in here. Into the older bin, I thought we would put faster moving stuff like just the tomatoes perhaps here in the younger bin where we know we're probably going to go a little bit longer i thought we could put the stems i'll tell you besides a bunch of juicy tomato there's also a little bit of garlic in here so as it's all thawing it's starting to develop this um kind of delicious scent reminiscent of perhaps a pizza pie or something like that i don't know So as you can see, a variety of different types of tomatoes were growing in my garden. And these were all the ones that I kind of just decided as I was picking them off to just chuck them out, out of the bunch. Some of them had cracks on them and some, were, some of them were starting to really degrade considerably. So it seemed to make sense to, you know, set them aside, throw them in the freezer for the worms. And that was just, what, yesterday, day before? I mean, I just picked these off the plants, so they're so fresh. Other than having been frozen, perhaps just one night, they're almost all vine ripened. A couple green ones in there too, but mostly stuff that's good to go as soon as it thaws out. And I've also got, got these flakes. Let's throw that in here amidst the um, top layer of bedding that we just gave them. This is all flakes of corn, corn on the cob. Probably mostly cob, but good, good bit of corn kernels in here as well. I still got an entire jar of this stuff, so I'm just gradually trying to make, make that stuff go away too. But we're pretty much done here. I think we can just start bringing in some material to cover up the feeding area. At the same time, I guess this will be a good chance to just blend in some of this nice leafy material. This is one of the things I like to do best. And I think the worm bins probably really appreciate it too, is just to get a whole bunch of really nice fresh bedding mixed in with all the material pretty much everywhere. A lot of times just the middle sections where I'm feeding get a nice boost of bedding. Since I like to supplement the feeding with some bedding, sometimes the top surface gets a bit. But there's just this satisfying feeling about blending Bedding, bedding in throughout the entire system. Doing this is just got this feeling to it, you know, like doing something that the worms are probably going to be able to make some really good use out of. I mean, the leaves that I've got to replace that was it, you know, to replace this as a top covering, the stuff we're kind of blending in right now, it's not a whole lot. It might be a pretty much it's kind of like a dusting of leaves today. I'm going to have to go outside and replenish my supply of leaves. But I think we've got enough just to lay down a little bit of a top dressing just to give the whole thing a nice natural kind of appearance. At the same time we're also putting all this stuff that's been sitting in here for the past 10 days to a much more noble use being amidst all the material and making itself available throughout the material for the worms to use as extra bedding for extra food to nibble on and you know there's a tomato popping out through the surface let's see if we can keep all those yummy foods below the surface now before we uh before we lay down our feeding zone indicator on our top covering let's see what we got i don't want to drop all of it into any one of the systems not knowing exactly how much i've got 
There's a little tiny bit left. We'll bring that back over here into the older system and that's that. It's not a whole lot, but it's not bad. Better than nothing, right? If we sprinkle it around, you can almost get a top covering in all sections of the bin. Nice. All right, and it's a good thing we held on to our feedings on indicators since we didn't have replacements for them on this go around. Maybe next time. And these top coverings of sugar bag. It's like when you buy a bag of sugar, as you might know, the um, the bag is a double bag. Two layers of paper. I guess it's sort of a little built-in insurance policy. If you were to accidentally drop it, you wouldn't have a bunch of sticky mess all over the floor. Perhaps one layer of the bag would tear and then the inner bag would help hold on or vice versa. But yeah, this this piece of paper, this double layer of sugar bag is really holding up. I wondered if there might be a little bit of remnant of sugar attached to the inside of it, to the brown bag side of it that the sugar is in. Out here is where all the labeling is and the nutritional information. I kind of wondered if there might have been like a little bit of a sugar flavor to the paper that might cause a reaction that might get the worms to come out like crazy for it, but that never happened. So another of my little curiosities about my worm bins. You know, it's just observing things that are kind of a mystery and sometimes you wonder, hey, what could possibly be going on over there? I wonder. <laughs> so I made a little bit of a mess, as you can see down there. So I got a few things I gotta take care of getting cleaned up and put away. But you know that stuff is so boring, I'm not gonna keep you around for that. Let's let's leave it at that. That's the end of the video. Before I go there really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.